Lesson 130, Part 2. And, you know, it's uh, just like some random stuff. Yeah. This is the first worksheet we're going to work on. Problem Solving Worksheet 130A. And the question says, Taylor has a domino with a total of six dots. One half of the domino has two more dots than the other half. Show what the dots on her domino look like. So the first thing I want to do is draw myself a domino. And we know that dominoes are divided in half and often better looking than that, but you know, we're all doing the best we can. There are six dots total. One side has two more dots than the other side. So what that means is that both sides have at least two dots. And then one side has two more dots than the other side. So if this side has two dots and this side had two more dots, oh, hey, wait a second. How many dots is this all together? One, two, three, four, five, six. So how many dots are on each half of the domino? Four and two. And how did we figure this out? We drew a picture. All right, let's look at this page right here. It says, Denise has a domino with seven dots. One half of the domino has three more dots than the other half. Show what each side of the domino looks like. Okay, so let's make ourselves a domino. Ah, uh, again with the wiggly lines. And we're trying to get to the number seven. So, how can we make the number seven? Well, I could do four and three. And that adds up to seven, but it says one half of the domino has three more dots than the other half. This only has one more dot. So, sorry, messy domino, you're not right. Now, if I'm remembering my dominoes correctly, I could have one and six, right? That adds up to seven, but this side has five more dots than the other side. So that's not gonna work. So there's a couple more ways that you could add it up to get to seven. So I want you to try and find those on your own. So I showed you two wrong ways to do it. You need to go ahead and find the right way. All right, friends, this is our last page for today. This is, as you can see, a multiplication table. And the way it works is where the two numbers meet, you write down what those equal to when they're multiplied. So for example, zero times zero, well, that's just zero. Um, one, times zero is still zero. Two times zero, zero. What do you think is happening here? What happens anytime you multiply a number by zero? It's zero. So in this, we're multiplying this number by this number. Zero times one. This number by this number. This number by this number. So all down this line, all of these numbers are zero. Now let's move it over one. Zero, but now we're going to multiply it by one. Uh, that's still zero. Oh, but now one, when we move over, one and one, that's one. What about two? Two and one, two times one is? two. Three times one is three. Four times one is four. Five
five times one is five. We know how this works. Now, I know that we have not done in our class nine times nine. Yeah, we're not trying to get there. We're just trying to fill it in as much as we know how to do. So we've got our zero. This time we're gonna go all the way over to two. Well, zero times two is still, surprisingly enough, zero. But now we're doing one times two, that's two. Two times two is four. Three times two, six. Four times two, eight. Five times two, 10. Six times two, 12. Seven times two, 14. Eight times two, 16. And nine times two is 18. All right, I want you guys to try and do the same things with three, four, and five. So we have zero times three, zero. One times three, three. Two times three, six. And you guys only need to go to five because that's as much as we've learned in class. And also, if you don't understand how to do this, you're going to work on it again next year in third grade. This is not something you have to understand and remember forever right now. This is just a way to practice, but if you don't get it, that's okay. And if you do get it, that's okay. Either way, I'm still proud of you. I still think you're doing a great job and I still adore you. Happy mathing.